did have a crescent butterfly here. But it flushed when the uh, jogger went by. I'm just going to keep my camera ready. feel like I'm going to see it or another one again shortly. My name is Rob, and I've been a naturalist, nature guide, and content creator for a few years now. I'm more known for the songbirding podcast where I record songbirds in their habitats. But I've also been experimenting with live streams of birding and nature walks on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash songbirder. Okay, coming in. Coming. Here we go. After a couple years of doing live streams, I decided to get a good action camera to take for hikes, just to see what I could come up with. I searched and I couldn't seem to find any good long-form naturalist content on YouTube and thought to myself, why not go on a hike? That would just be like one of my live streams, except without the hassle involved in staying in the range of a cell phone tower, and with the high video quality that is possible when you don't have the bottleneck of upload bandwidth. And then I could add a touch of video editing to weave in additional photos, videos, or audio I recorded while the action camera is recording. This first hiking video is nearly three hours long because it was only minimally edited, mainly for battery and SD card swaps. It was, in real time, a three hour hike. The intent for the series is that you'll get a full, complete hike, including the long breaks between each point of interest. All of it was recorded in Southern Ontario, Canada, at the end of the summer of 2023. So, come join me for a hike as we explore the trails at nature's pace. at the Gypsum Mine Tract. And got my trusty H6 here. So sometimes we're going to switch to this microphone. We want higher quality sound. Certainly not something we want while there's traffic. We don't need it then. So I'm going to turn it off for now. But, here's the entrance. This is in Haldeman County. We can, in theory, do a bit of a loop here, but I'm just going to stick to the Gypsum Mine Trail today. Let's see what this is like. This is the first time doing a video like this. This is part of the Trans Canada Trail. And anytime we come across something interesting to listen to, I'm going to switch to the other mic. And uh, I'm going to listen in. As you can hear, probably you can hear, there's a lot of insects. We're in, well, beginning of September now, actually. I was about to say late August. Got a bird on a wire over there. You know, the other thing I'm going to do. 
can't seem to bring my binoculars with me. They get in the way of the action camera. I will at least have my Canon PowerShot SX70 HS with me. So I can take some photos of things. Possibly show you. Let's see if that shows up on the, the thing here, but I can always edit it over top. We've got morning dove on a wire. So if there's something interesting, we'll uh, so if there's something interesting, we'll uh, share that through the photos. All right. So you might be able to tell I broke my the screen on this thing. That was in Alberta. I did that. I still have yet to repair it. I actually do have a an as-is parts model that has a as a LCD screen that's fine. So I'm gonna fix that up soon. That's a big one. All right. We're just gonna take a hike along here. Sometimes we'll be talking, sometimes not. And uh, maybe point out some of the plants and flowers and things we have here. Maybe a little bit about this trail would help. Um, I was thinking that when I do trails like this, I could say right off the bat what kind of terrain you can expect with this place. I guess you want to come here. This is a rail trail. Rail trails are former rail lines that uh, are now trails, so very flat, gravel in this case, so very accessible. I would hazard a guess if even those in wheelchairs could do this. So very accessible trail. There's a Northern Cardinal scene. Let's turn on the... Of course I turned the mic on a little too late. We'll see if it says anything else. A little bit of a song. Problem is, we are kind of close to the road, so turning on the good mic, not the best time for it. We're just going to get really loud highway noise. Now, I was going to point out something though, actually, before we too far down this trail. See these, the shrub over here with the pointy, big maroon buds on them. This is staghorn sumac, native plant, tree slash shrub, depending on your opinion. In about a month or so, they're going to be full of brilliant colors. It's not going to be green. It's going to be red, orange, green, and yellow. It's going to be a cascade of colors. Plus this maroon red, of course. And those seeds are going to stay there all winter, and chickadees and other birds love them. Rail trails have them all along them often, so I'm sure we'll come across more. But yeah. A mosquito on me. Goldenrod. It's in season, blooming. There's this myth that it causes allergies, but it really doesn't. It just happens to bloom at the same time as uh, pigweed and things like that that also cause allergy symptoms. And the reason that's known is because goldenrod doesn't actually have pollen that's light enough to be in the air. You would have to ingest it somehow, like eat it or be touching it and be touch sensitive. 
Uh, I'm sure there's some people allergic to it in some way or another, but you'd have to be touching it or eating it. Because the pollen grains are far too heavy. That's why there's bees to pollinate it. Got several honeybees here. fly. I don't know how visible that is. Robin? Let's turn on the mic. See if he wants to say anything. American robin hopping around up here, but it's not what's vocalizing. I think there's a mockingbird or a catbird here somewhere. Uh, another robin is blue. Yeah, it's not very loud. I'm gonna move along. We're a little safe though. I'm singing a bit. But we'll save the uh, high quality audio recording part for when there's some louder birds. This is the time of year when there's a lot less bird song suddenly. All the birds are either migrating or molting molting feathers so that they can migrate, or molting feathers so they can be ready for winter. When they're molting, they don't want to bring attention to themselves too much. Well, this cardinal does, though. Let's listen to him. It's a male cardinal here. some mosquitoes here. You may hear that, especially if they get close to the mic. This is the time of year when the cardinals start winding down their song a lot. This is not as loud and proud as they usually are. Cardinal right in front of me. I don't know how visible that is, but in the middle of the shrubs there. Also another mockingbird somewhere in here. They're quietly making some song. Again, there's still more traffic noise here than I like. Then again, I'm using I'm using a directional mic, so you probably don't hear as much as I do. Move up a bit. Chop, chop. 
while we're hearing this cardinal, we're also hearing a little chup chup sound over here from a catbird. Northern Cardinal Song, I describe it as kind of a pretty, 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 pretty. I don't know why, but in my head, I always associate with the word in French uh, for lost, Purdue. Perdue, 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 Perdue. If you know your French, and you can just as mentally associate Northern Cardinals with being lost somehow. But I've also heard it being compared to saying birdie, 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 birdie. It's also pretty easy to remember. Just have to remember to associate with uh, Northern Cardinals specifically. I'm singing and eating berries. Let's see if I can get far enough back that you can actually see it. Probably just a little fleck here. You know, this is a very wide angle lens that I am not used to using it yet, so... I'm gonna... Oh, a cyclist coming. Just sit down, just up here. See if, see if there's a chance I can get a photo here. Got a lot of enthusiasm for it being early September. Longest sequence I've heard in a long time from a Northern Cardinal. What was that seven, eight seconds? And again, this chup chup sound. It's a gray catbird. They're infamous for hiding really well, though.
the loud little one. All right, he's flying down. So that's a male, bright red, northern cardinal. I think we're going to turn on for audio recording. Let's go for a walk. Huh. Barely a few steps and I've got a hummingbird perched in a dead tree. So let's see here. Again, not sure if this will be visible. I'll probably overlay it over top of the video, the actual photo anyways. But hummingbirds, specifically ruby-throated hummingbirds, they enjoy sitting in dead trees like that. Because they like to be able to see in all directions. They don't like leaves in their face because they're able to just take off at any moment's notice. So any predators getting anywhere near them, they'll be able to see them and just leave. Wow, oh, there's a lot of apples here. That's a very healthy apple tree. Oh, well, we got a cicada buzzing. About to have a couple dogs and a couple runners go past me here. Well, they're off leash, but at least they're good. The dogs. Too many times I've been hiking on trails like this, and dogs will be off leash and will come up to you and jump on you. And I'm carrying equipment that isn't so great for being around dogs. This looks like a dog toy. So. I have to be ready to kind of pull it up out of the way. A bit more about where we're at. Haldeman County is in southern Ontario. It's on the north end of Lake Erie. We're in kind of farming country right here. I don't know how well the fields can be seen from this vantage point. There is a field on the other side of these shrubs. A lot of the rail trails, that, most rail trails are 20 to 30 years old these days. And uh, the rail lines used to maintain um, the lines by cutting down all the trees and shrubs alongside, so there'd be less risk of something falling on the tracks. Um, now nobody does that really, uh, at least not to the extent it used to, because clearly, here we go, there's a grape. So I'm not sure if this is fox grape or riverside grape. We are not riverside right now, but it could still be that species. But we are in the Ni uh, near the Niagara region where wine is grown and it's partly because we can definitely grow grapes here. Um, these are wild though. These are, I believe, a native species. A wild grape. They're not big. There's going to be little things. 
still sweet tasting though. Someday I'll learn my insects. Because that sounds like an insect I could actually identify. Because it's a pattern. It's probably grasshopper of some sort. Oh, catbird. Let's turn on the mic. You can guess now why they're called catbirds. And they love to hide in trees. So, they can fool people quite a bit. You might think there's a cat stuck in a tree if you just don't know about catbirds. Then shrub like this, they really love. They are a, a mockingbird of sorts. They're related to mockingbirds and they love to do mimicry. Right now, it's not that they're mimicking cats, that's their actual, like, call of a catbird. Their song is where they do mimicry, and uh, that tends to be a rambling thing. Whereas the calls are just kind of one-offs, like this. Getting mosquitoes! <laughs> I'm getting mosquitoes all over my face right now. Generally this place isn't too bad for insects, yet. These are not aggressive mosquitoes, and it's only because I'm stopped. doll's eyes, um, berries. This is from the dogwood known as red osier, or red osier. I'm not sure if it's meant to be a French name, osier, or osier, but it's called red osier because of this red, um, redness to the, the stems of the berries that extend off them, just even the stems in general. Somewhat red, reddish. Not that one there, but this one here. In the winter, they have this reddish quality to them. So all the berries have fallen off and you got red all over them. Alright. Oh, there's an interesting gall on this one. So that's not a berry, that's a gull. It's basically a tumor when it comes to plants. Uh, what happens is a insect of some kind has injected an egg inside the stem. And the plant has reacted as if it has an infection and just grown um, around it, but it's really inflated in this case. This is a reaction plants often have, and which actually give whatever insect that is a uh, opportunity to eat throughout the winter. It eats all the stem fluids and sugars and all that inside there. And then it'll just eat its way out come spring. And it'll come out as a larvae of some kind. And then have some sort of metamorphosis stage where it uh, will turn into some kind of insect. I can't remember which one 
commonly does the gulls like that. So here's another staghorn sumac, but you will not see berries on this one. This is a male plant. Staghorn sumac are sexually dimorphic. So there are male plants and female plants. The one we saw earlier was female. And has the berries. Not all trees and shrubs are like that, but some are. Another catbird. While it's typical in North America for only males to sing when it comes to birds, it's not typical here uh, worldwide. And this is not a song, it's a call. It could be male or female. And the catbird, it's hard to tell from plumage. They just look the same. At least to us humans. They are very funny. They are gray with a black cap on the top of their head. They have kind of a bit of uh, russet color underneath their tail. Probably see me swiping at insects here. There's some really slow mosquitoes. It's a little bit of Virginia creeper here. This this berry. Creeper berry. This is the actual creeper. This type of vine. Native vine, not an invasive. Well, actually, it is sort of an, it's a native invasive. It really takes over when it comes into an area. So I guess I shouldn't say it's not invasive, because it is. But it's native plant, so it's kind of the good invasive. In North America, we have a lot of invasive species that are not native to here, so. multiple catbirds here, about three or four. You can actually see the silhouette of one probably, as it's hopping around in here. They have impressively large tails too. Maybe not like a boat-tailed grackle in the south, but maybe close to almost what a grackle, a common grackle around here would have. Okay. I think from this point forward, I'll just leave this other mic on. Probably make it easier in editing for me to <laughs> just line it up rather than have to paste together a whole bunch of files. Find where they go. There's a marker function somewhere on here. Maybe I can use that. Oh, here we go. Here's a access point to the field. So we can at least see what things look like here. I'm not 100% sure because I don't know soybeans very well, but I think this is a soybean crop. 
some kind of fuzzy bean. We'll probably hear some airplanes because there is a, a small private airport just over there. Once in a while something comes into land or leaves. I want to come back to see this catbird. It's fairly close up here. You can hear the cicada. It was a rob and it landed on a branch and I got startled by me I think and it jumped off the branch and the branch broke. It's the first time I've ever seen a robin break a branch before. They are not very heavy. Alright, the jogger's coming back. The dogs hopefully they'll be good still. Just in case I do edit that out later. Let's pass by the joggers again, but this time the dogs want to play. Cedar waxwing up above. Well, it's got a loud airplane here. And a cyclist coming soon. Good spot to stop for a moment. We got our cedar waxwing. Probably coming in for a landing or something. Going in circles. Oh, this biplane. It's been a biplane flying around here for a while. I noticed it when I was driving in. Stuff like that's a real bane of field recordists like myself because this recording device here is super sensitive. And you know what? When you're out here on your own, something like that flies over while you do notice your brain is really good at filtering it out and not thinking about it. But do an audio recording of it, you will notice. You will not be able to filter it out when you hear it through an audio recording. This context isn't there. The airplane got, plane got quiet really quick. Wow. That usually doesn't happen. All right, I was hoping to share the sound of cedar wax wings. I think they have moved along. So we'll come back to the mount after maybe. Maybe on the way back.
sorry, just adjusting the action camera there because I thought I heard a sweeping sound coming from the chest mount. saw a hummingbird fly past me. They're on migration right now, so there's a good chance we'll have some fly by here a fair bit. So there's that cricket sound. Maybe I'll switch mics here. That's like that nighttime cricket sound. Really soft. Of course, there's some kind of distant <laughs> loud motor disrupting it a bit, but maybe give it a moment and you'll be able to hear better. Yeah, over here. When you go out in the lawn at night, you'll hear that kind of cricket. Lots of buzzing insects, grasshoppers, another catbird. Give me the opportunity to stand in the shade for a moment. Not much shade in these rail trails. The rail lines always wanted to keep fairly clear around, so. Okay, we'll move along, because even if I do get this catbird, I've got another airplane. Mm, excuse me. Another airplane going over. When everybody thinks of the countryside, they think it's nice and quiet, but only true in some areas. And it's very easy to disrupt, to disrupt when it's really quiet. All it takes is one loud vehicle and its sound will carry through this flat landscape for miles. So if there was still forest between here and that highway, then we wouldn't be hearing that. Nice wildflower. This is New England aster. Hopefully that's in view. Big purple flowers. One of the last uh, things to look forward to blooming around here. After the New England aster, there really isn't much else new in terms of flowers, and they can bloom into December. They can keep going a long time. survive some light frost even. Here we go, more staghorn sumac. Let's listen to all these insects. Except I'm hearing a mosquito too, which is not as relaxing as these other insects. So that's because it's flying into my ear.
Oh, we've got a nightshade. These are red berries. It's a plant known as deadly nightshade, which um, I don't think it's actually deadly unless you were to ingest an awful lot of it, but it will make you quite sick. They are what tomatoes and so on have evolved from. I don't know if it's this species in particular they evolved from. I think it's one in South America, but these are an offshoot of those South American ones as well, I'm sure. So like tiny poisonous tomatoes, really. But they're just, they're hardy to this region, so they can survive the winter. Or at least their seeds can. Get a cat bird here, but you want quiet. A tree species I can identify. It's Manitoba maple, also known as box elder. It's actually kind of one word, box elder. There are maple with compound leaves, so each leaf is actually multiple leaves. Generally five or seven, something like that. So it comes off the the branch is a little kind of branchlet with leaflets. I'm not even sure if branchlet is the right term, but leaflet is. And I'm not entirely sure if they're actually native to south, southern Ontario. I think they're more meant to be in the prairies in Manitoba, such as the term Manitoba maple would suggest. But they spread like crazy here. They grow really well. They're really invasive. They're really hard to cut back if you get one in your lawn like I have. Because you can cut them to the ground and they'll just grow right back. You can do just about anything to try to kill them and they'll still grow. And uh, they're not particularly sturdy trees, so if you get one that grows up, they're going to grow up really fast, but they're going to kind of die young because uh, they're just going to fall apart after a certain amount of time, start falling over. It's, it's not very uh, sturdy trees. I'm sure occasionally you can get a really sturdy one, but in general, they're not meant to live long. Now here's another example, deadly nightshade. They're really nice flowers, purple. Here we go. Hopefully that's visible, nice purple flowers. Yeah, I can move the camera up a bit. Hopefully it doesn't make too much noise when I do that. So you can see both the flowers and the fruit here. And then this is also covered with ivy, or is it grape? No, this is grapes. I think this is grapes. And there's red osier underneath it, the dogwood. Yeah, ivy would be darker. These are grapes, they just don't have to be blooming or fruiting. I don't actually know. If grapes have the male-female quality like the uh, Stagmar Sumac. It's common mullen or mulin, I'm not sure the exact pronunciation. Not a native plant, but they grow long spikes like this, and they have little flowers on them like that one does up there. It's getting near the end of season, so it's just the last bit of flowers. They have these long spikes, though, that stick out. They'll be there for a couple of years, probably, before they really fall over. They'll die this year, but 
the spikes will be there for a while. As mentioned it before how quiet the countryside sometimes isn't. The other thing is airplanes and not just not commercial aircraft actually. Just recreational aircraft because they're very loud, very slow, tend to often fly in circles. Uh, there's a lot of skydiving operations around here, for example, uh, sightseeing, photography. And recordists, permanent recordists like myself, is very frustrating because once one starts being audible, like this one up here, I know I've got about three or four minutes before I'm going to have the ability to record more cleanly again. And that's if it's going to do a straight line. Sometimes it doesn't. Okay, we got some kind of flycatcher or... Oh, we got two airplanes. Even better. <laughs> this is why it's nice to do a video. Especially with a camera that has a microphone that has some noise isolation to it. So hopefully it's not too overwhelming. Should be able to not make that uh, aircraft motor be too unbearable. Insect on me here. There we go. Mosquito, I think. There were a couple birds hanging around in here. One of them looked like a flycatcher of some kind. So what it was doing was kind of sitting perched out and then a fly out and fly back. Probably grabbing a fly insect of some kind. And then there was also a sparrow somewhere here. Oh, there's an airplane taking off. There's an airport over there. Private one, I'm pretty sure. Maybe you're able to see this blue aircraft take off. Oh, vulture. So that's probably not as visible. It may be just a dot out there. I mean, this isn't 4K, so maybe... Maybe you're watching in 4K and you have it fully blown up on a big screen. You might be able to see that vulture way out there, flying, soaring. Uh, he's kind of probably going to be low the... Uh, shrub line here now, but I'll keep my eye over there and see if we uh, can watch it a bit more. Yeah, this shrub line's a little better here, and I see two more of them. So here's what I'll do. Got this camera. See if we can at least Little picture of them. Oh, he's gone below the tree line. There we go. Good. All right. That is a turkey vulture. Actually, a couple of them out there. Oops, wrong button. I meant to. <laughs> I meant to make a movie, and I hit the power button instead. making a little video, but it's going to be pretty unsteady, I think. So we're looking really far off. Optical image stabilization can only do so much when you're at like the equivalent of 2100 millimeters, which is a very high super zoom. But maybe I can share those few seconds with you. Um, 
Yeah, what is the equivalent? Oh, it's 1365 millimeters. Okay, it's not quite 2100. I think that's the Nikon that does that. How long and we haven't even made it to 56 minutes. The battery's getting a little low. Let's see if we can make it, make it to this road up ahead here. And then I'll do a battery swap. So you'll see a little cut when we get to that. Oh, another apple tree. And possibly a cherry tree here too. wild apple tree like this is going to have super bitter, bitter apples. They might be okay for baking, but you wouldn't want to necessarily eat one. They're essentially crab apples, although rather large for crab apples. This I'm not so sure. I don't think this is cherries, but it could be. Not sure. is raspberry bush here or blackberry one or the other only a little bit of a raspberry blackberry oh it's a raspberry it's red oh here's some right here I mostly picked clean there's a rather dense looking one here that one has not grown properly or has been picked clean by birds I'm not sure which Oh, here's a better one. There we go. That fell apart when I picked it, but... Raspberries in the wild are really good. This one's not a particularly great specimen, though. A little extra bitter, but... And the fruit isn't forming the way that makes it easy to pick. Or it could be just too far along. I mean, most of it's been picked clean, but it may not have been fed on. It may just have fallen off. They may be at the kind of end of their cycle. Probably a bit beyond when you're supposed to be harvesting them. either poplar or aspen or beech, something in that family here. These trees. You can always hear these trees as much as you see them. If you've ever heard of trembling aspen, that's part of why they're called that, is these leaves go like that, although I don't know if that's this species specifically. learning my trees year to year, but it's not, it's a long process and I don't retain everything I learned completely. 
staghorn sumac though I know very well and look some of them here have turned red it's the fiery mixture of colors I mentioned earlier some of them have started to turn here these are older trees can you see how high they are but they never really grow much higher than this so whether you want to call that a tree or not it's kind of up to you Once they get much bigger than this, they fall over. Or they die. Sometimes they just die from not being able to get all the nutrients up and down the trunk or stem. Oh, we got an oak here. If it would be white oak or red oak, that's something I can remember right now how the difference works. But it is an oak, there are oak leaves. There's a parent tree right here, so this is a young one. Seems to be reaching out to the trail, which is not going to be a winning strategy for it. Well, there is an acorn on this one though, way up there. There's any on the lower stems. Yeah, can't reach it. Here's a plant you don't want to see. It says Phragmites. It's a uh, Middle Eastern grass, highly invasive in Southern Ontario. It takes over wetlands and destroys everything else. It takes a lot of effort to remove. You essentially have to plow over it, pull it out, keep working on it every year. It's hard to burn or anything like that because they grow in wet areas hard to burn a wet area. It takes a ridiculous effort to get rid of them. And uh, their seeds blow in the wind very easily so they spread very quickly. And this, this little patch here is probably not going to be a problem. It's going to be starved out by the other invasive species here, the uh, European buckthorn seems to be here. And there's some red osier here too, so there's some good ones too. And there's walnut. Walnut's a, a good native. It's also uh, invasive, but that's the way it works. It takes over a place, helps with succession. So it finds somewhere it grows, it excludes everything else out with a chemical it puts into the ground. So that it can grow and everything else around it will die but then once it gets big and tall it doesn't live very long and other things then take over for it other trees and it's kind of if you start seeing these guys growing up in a in a field uh you know without intervention give it you know 50 to 100 years probably more more than 50 probably 70 to 100 years and you might have a forest. Oh. A little flying grasshopper here. I think it's a locust of some kind. Ooh. Some apples. Not very healthy looking.
Alright, last little thing, little viburnum patch. I don't know much about these. They're hanging out on near the road here. So I'm gonna switch batteries and we're gonna continue on the trail here. All right, we've reached the next road. Had to stop to switch batteries there. You can switch SD cards. It started telling me that the card wasn't fast enough anymore. I think it overheated a little bit. American Robin up here. So, here we are on the trail. We've got quite a bit to go yet. Do you think I'm not going to do this entire trail today? Okay, it's kind of a first test. Some berries off of a Virginia creeper. This is a better example than last time. I'm just gonna adjust that just slightly. Butterfly. How is this our first butterfly? It's been over an hour. The cabbage white flying around here. Oh, another butterfly. to be a crescent butterfly, but it's just moving too fast. It's not landing anywhere. Here's a good example. Full plant. New England aster. It's got these long leaves, and the way you can tell it's the right kind of leaf is you got this thing where the leaf kind of wraps around the stems. Even though it's only coming out of one spot, it kind of hugs the stem. That's one identifying feature. If you just see these start sprout out of the ground, you can actually tell that it's one of these. Plus, they tend to be a little bit fuzzy. A little bit of fuzziness to them. This one's very woody because it's been growing all season. But these purple flowers yeah I'll explain that again because maybe I didn't have the camera pointed the right way. Um, you can kind of see how the leaf hugs the stem. It's coming out for one point and then kind of wrapping around a little bit. We've got these dark purple in this case. They can go light purple. They can almost go white with the yellow center. Really big flower. Not super huge, but big for an aster. There's a lot of aster species around here, but that one's the 
one I always say is an easy one to identify. Tell the difference between the other ones, especially from the color. Morning does. Just resting on a pole here. Not pole. <laughs> Dead tree. Perfect time for a photo though. This bird's perching very well. Oh, he blinked. That's okay, I got more, multiple photos. Where he or she didn't blink. Can't actually tell with the uh, morning doves unless it's singing. At least I can't. So it's just having a chill afternoon sitting in the sun. You might kind of hear an aircraft way above. That's the kind of jet aircraft, commercial aircraft, that uh, is less disruptive to a recording. It's way too high up. It's not as cutting the sound. I always call those other recreational airplanes uh, flying lawnmowers, because that's basically what they sound like. bird on a dead tree up here. A couple of them I think. I'm going to hope they stay still long enough for me to get some photos of them. No, only one bird. The other is just a bird-shaped part of the tree. Okay. Microphone in the way, but I'm not using that mic right now. Okay, let's get up here. Oh, it's a waxwing. It's a juvenile waxwing. Why well, it's acting so strange. <laughs> they don't usually sit like that on dead trees, but here we go. Juvenile waxwing. It's got kind of all this inconsistent color to it. Very slender head. Doesn't really have its crest yet. It's too young. Seems to have lost the flock. I'm sure it'll find its friends soon enough though. Oh, there's the second one. Never mind. It's not alone. Oh, red-tailed hawk here. It's just flying by. Let's see if we can get a quick photo of it. It'll be a silhouetted photo. Whew. You can hear a catbird. I'm getting mosquitoes flying around my ears, which is not fun. There is a red-tailed hawk. Okay.
hopefully my carrying around of a camera and extra microphone isn't too disruptive to this recording. An apple tree. Something squeaking here. It bothers me. <laughs> Not sure what's making that sound. Just gonna make sure it isn't the camera. That yeah, isn't. That's too bad. That would have been easy to fix. Now, I am not going to worry about it anymore. At least I'm going to try not to. Okay, we have a little pond here. I think that was a cat bird that just ran out, flew into the shrub here. Lots of frogs. turtles out there. Let's get a turtle photo. Look at this turtle, a pair of turtles. These are Midland's Painted Turtles. And of course, this is where all the insects are. <laughs>
is a uh, autumn meadowhawk, a type of dragonfly. It was perched here. I think it disappeared on me as I got the camera out, or I just lost it. It's a great time of year for dragonflies, damselflies, butterflies. Okay, I found it again. We've got a new spot. Whoops, I gotta show that to you. It's a meadowhawk. Meadowhawks, small red dragonflies in this case. I think this is the autumn meadowhawk, but there's other ones. Well, red for males. Uh, females are golden, at least with this species. There are other ones, I guess, that are different colors. I shouldn't say that, but this particular species, whatever it is, uh, I don't, I don't know if it's white-faced or aut autumn meadowhawk. Those are a couple that come to mind. But it is a meadowhawk species. They fly around meadows like this and hawk other insects. So they hunt other insects, small ones. Was that a frog I just heard? very briefly. Not sure if it was a wood frog or a tree frog. <laughs> That's a very squeaky uh, great catbird. <laughs> it could be a juvenile, like a young one, doesn't know its voice yet. Oh, hello, there's a chipmunk staring at me, perched on a dead wig. Let me set down this uh, microphone. We'll continue to listen if we... Ah, you flew away. Not flew away, you ran away. <laughs> that would be impressive if the uh, chipmunk flew away. So I'm going to get a picture of them. But uh, they went down into shade where I can't see it anymore. I am hearing from some tree frogs nearby. Oh! Walnuts. This is black walnut. This is the walnut fruit. This is not a kind of fruit you'd want to eat. It's disgusting. In fact, even just touching it, my hands are going to smell awful. Very, um, kind of like a pine-ish scent. It's very distinct, though. I just think of it as walnut. It's a smell that once it gets on you, just anything you touch starts smelling like it. Very pungent. By the way, we have a lot of catbirds here. Mosquitoes here, I gotta blow off my face. Hmm. 
There's another aster species. Actually, yeah, that's aster. Not for a moment is um, Philadelphia flea bane, but I don't think so. This is an aster of some kind. I don't know which species exactly, though. Tent caterpillar. This is a tent of a tent caterpillar. In a walnut tree. Uh, yeah, if we look on this side, you might be able to see all the caterpillars inside there. Very deep in there. Just kind of hanging. Some of them wriggling. Oh, there we go. This side is the... Uh... Wow, there's a lot here. you get to be up close to them like that, usually higher up in the tree. kind of bird flying through here. Couldn't identify it soon enough. They're very ripe. Not as big as the domestic ones. something calling me. I feel like that might be a Baltimore Oriole. There's a lot of things it could be. It could also be a hawk. Kind of whistling sound, there's a few things that can come from. It'll be interesting. Let's see what Merlin thinks. If they continue vocalizing. 
I'm getting swarmed by mosquitoes though. Okay, hold on, we have a bug in the microphone. It's in the wind cover. Well, a couple blue jays just flew by, that could actually explain it. They like to make all kinds of sounds. It has a flicker, just flew by too, and another blue jay. Okay, the sheer number of blue jays here. I would just be comfortable saying that was blue jays. Now, if I can get one I can photograph, we'll take a look at that. He has like, several of them flying by here. Okay. I don't know. I'm going to hope this one. Okay, he's still co cooperating. Male or female, not sure. Give me a bit of a silhouetted look, which is fine. Let's see, there we go. Either young or it's molting its crest right now. Kind of a backlit photo, so maybe if I do overlay that over top of the video, I can uh, brighten it up a bit. Another jogger coming. There hasn't been very many people. It's been a pretty quiet trail for people so far. did have a crescent butterfly here, but it flushed when the uh, jogger went by. I'm just going to keep my camera ready. feel like I'm going to see it or another one again shortly.
Oh yeah, it's a photo with its wings fully extended, but it's not happening right now. All right, here we go again. It's back. Oh, oh no, I'll let, it, I'll let it go again. It was landed on an angle that I couldn't really see it terribly well for photography purposes. You want it facing away from you, not towards you. Here we go. It's not fully extending its wings out though. Okay, so I'm going to try something here. In addition to, here's some photos of it, uh, which I might try to overlay. Let's switch modes here for a minute. Alright, so I tried to use the selfie stick, the extension stick, to see if I get the camera up and close to the butterfly, but it didn't like that idea. I was going to use this as a turnaround point for this. Let's go a little bit further because we got a nice farm field here full of baled hay. It's kind of a nice sight to end with, maybe, on this end. Wonder how, uh, how visible those bales of hay are. If we go down the trail a little bit. This is a much quieter road. You might be able to notice. So we've got one more road after this, and then it's a really long stretch of trail, no roads. So you get to new housing developments. Let's walk a little bit here because I think you can't go very far here until the side is uh, all shrub and you can't see into this field at all. We got a few dozen bales of hay, round bales of hay. Juniper shrub over here on the left. It's got some berries on it. I'm not going to try to climb in there, but it's a very dark green shrub. 
over there. At least I think I'm looking at some berries from here. Yeah, there's some on it. Kind of bluish. Another Astra species. That one's not the, uh, it is purplish, but it's not the uh, New England Aster. Might be the Sky Blue Aster. I'm not sure. And, as per the theme today, we got more catbirds. This one's being very quiet, though. meowing quietly. Over here we have a song sparrow. It's cheeping quietly. kind of tree or shrub this was, it's been taken over by vines. Looks to be grapevines. I don't see any actual grapes on it. Again, I'm not sure if there's male, female tree or shrubs with, uh, with these grape species or not. Oh, there's some vultures down the road. Kind of landing in a hayfield back there. That's neat. So if I knew I had the extra time and battery, I would consider hiking up this road. Well, that's tempting. So I'm starting to turn around here, but tempted to do a little detour. Just hike up this country road a little bit. Where are some vultures flying around? Getting a touch of wind here. after so I'm back at the car if I still got a little bit of battery left I'm gonna drive up to here I have a nice little recording of any birds that happen to be sitting there well anything that happens to be sitting there nice close-up view that way I know I'm not wasting my time 
the hacking up there. It's got a whole bunch of sparrows crossing the road up ahead. hearing some sounds and I can't tell if it's coming from the chest strap or what. All right. Oh, vulture going overhead. Let's begin our walk back. Oxalis flower here. I believe that's what it is. Tall sunflower is the species name. One of the species names. Oxalis is the other. It's, uh, it's a perennial sunflower. Kind of a native tall grass prairie kind of species. It seems to be done blooming here though. Or at its end. There's a cat bird just flew in here.
Then we got a butterfly, another crescent butterfly. Listen to this cat bird. Oh, this butterfly is very uncooperative. <laughs> All right. Second, I get to a spot where I stop. I get a shot, it takes off. Butterflies are notoriously difficult to photograph. This one might be better because I can get into the shade here. Nope, it's gone again. At this point it knows that I'm following it, so it's going to try to get a better distance shot here. Let's see here. There's that. Ooh. Probably obstructing the view quite a bit here. Hopefully this is worth it. Yeah, that's all right. There we go. Crescent butterfly. There's a couple different species of them. Okay. All my tech out of the way here if I can. There's a couple different species of the crescent. There's the uh, pearl crescent and the northern crescent. They have minute details on the wings that are different. I don't usually bother trying to differentiate them when doing videos or live stream or anything like that. So I just don't know them well enough anymore. I used to. That was a green heron. Did you see that? And hear that? Very skinny little heron. Species called green heron. It must have been hunting in this little pond here. For frogs and fish. I don't know if there would be fish in here. Probably just be frogs. And toads and things like that. Alright, there is an aircraft nearby, but... Oh! And a kinglet. Drop the camera good. <laughs> it's okay though. This thing's pretty hardy. Um, kinglet, I'm unlikely to get a good photo of, but we will try. If I can spot it again. A different bird. Found a flight catcher. Might be yellow bellied flight catcher, I'm not actually sure. It is a flight catcher species of some kind. A little rusty on flight catchers right now. I did see a kinglet though, I thought.
I could be wrong though. Maybe it was a. Maybe it was a uh, flycatcher I saw before. It's kind of early for even ruby crowns to be showing up, I think. Well, maybe not. No, they, they can be here. I had seen them in early September. I see a lot of birds flying around back there, but... Not seeing too many great photo opportunities right now, so... Rather than wait it out, I am going to continue. Back in our turtle pond. Let's stop here for a moment. Actually, this might be a good transition point for me to switch SD cards because we're getting low on this one. <laughs> a little bit of the tech behind it, I'm still uh, needing to buy more SD cards. So I've got some, they're a little small for this right now. So we're going to do an SD card swap and we'll be right back here. Alright, now we're back. Got another one of those dragonflies here. Meadowhawk. Okay. Look at this. So this is Virginia creeper. In the fall it changes color to red. And this one's gone a little early. So don't worry, it's not poison ivy. It's got leaves of five, not leaves of three. Poison ivy can climb though sometimes. There's three forms of it around here and it does go red. 
maybe not that red, but it does go red. So you do need to be careful. Oh, what are these? I think this might actually be crab apples or some kind of cherry. Huh. Yeah, some kind of green crab apple. You know, we haven't looked at goldenrod for a little bit. Here's a honeybee with some almost full saddlebags on its sides. See those orange balls on its sides? Kind of like that's where it's carrying the pollen. Because they're not really, well, they kind of all are saddlebags. Because they hang off of where there would be a saddle, just like a saddlebag would. So maybe that's a good term. That's what I've always called them, at least. Huh. Really interesting mosquito lake creature here, too. I don't think it actually is a mosquito, though. There's a couple of them. It's got like a forked uh, proboscis, I think it's called. So it can't be for stabbing. How well it would have shown up on the video, though. But well, I guess I'll learn. Apple tree. Seeing all these apple trees make me hungry now. That's why. Ha! It's like, why is the audio paused here? There we go. I think that means recording. Yes. At some point I accidentally hit pause, I guess. I have to let no important parts did I do that. That was on the microphone, not the video. Actually, not sure what species of wildflower this is. Looks like a parsley kind of thing. <laughs> it's poop on the ground with a butterfly on it. Butterflies, certain species really love that. Where they get the nutrients and all that. And the fertilizer. There was a crescent butterfly on there. Morning, Dove. 
who was here earlier is still here. They are still sunning themselves, just sitting there, having a lazy morning in the sun. Let's get a photo from this angle. Be backlit, but let's see here. So it's backlit, silhouetted. Maybe I can clean that up later. And there are lots of mosquitoes around me now. So I'm gonna keep moving. That starling take off on the left there. You just saw a catbird fly, fly across the trail here. Cedar waxwing here. Do some audio recording of him, but this highway gonna be busy. Katie did briefly there. You do that zizit kind of call. There was just a zit. It's kind of where the name comes from because sometimes it sounds like the rhythm Katie did. Katie did zit zit zit. Oh, 
Okay, fresh battery. Yeah, we crossed. Last road to cross on the way back. This new turtle migration sign that I don't remember being here last year. Here's some American goldfinches in here. It's hard to hear them amongst all the insects. Not being the loudest. Now those cars are passed. <laughs> Still more cars. <laughs> That's okay. We heard a little bit of them. I don't know that we're going to get enough time without cars here to get any good listen to them. So let's continue. Oh, we got a weeping willow here. Willow tree, very young one. And we got staghorn stumac females on both sides here. more weeks and this will be some stunning colors here. It already kind of is, but it'll be even more so. all these grapes here. There was a catbird just flew in here a moment ago. Probably be here a few more weeks and then they'll start heading south for the most part. A few will stick around a little longer. You get occasionally one or two that are probably from much further north. They'll come to about here and stop for a while. And then uh, after a, a week or so of January, they're just done with it and head even further south. So catbirds won't fully overwinter here, but they will um, winter a little bit here.
some healthy apple tree here. It's growing wild. Again, you could probably harvest that and bake them into something. It'd be awful bitter, but you could add lots of sugar. <laughs> Lots of reds here. Here's some bigger apples. Weighing down the tree a bit even. Really nice patch of goldenrod here. Oh, bumblebee. Some honeybees and bumblebee. <laughs> Little creaky sounds coming from in here, I was hearing. Probably a catbird. They like to make little sounds that sound like twigs breaking sometimes. There's also lots of neat insect sounds here. Including those very sleepy sounding crickets.
All right, let's move along. peeping sound there. It's actually a frog. It's a spring peeper. It may not be spring, but they are. They don't just vanish when the spring ends. They, uh, they go breed and then eventually they start climbing up trees and singing like this. Of course now it doesn't want to sing. There you go. So I actually don't know a whole lot about their life cycle, but I assume that after the spring songs where you get all these peepers in these little wet bogs, wetland areas, you'll hear a chorus of those. And that's why they're called spring peeper, because in the spring You'll hear that peeping sound times, you know, a thousand of those at the same time. But closer to autumn, where we're at now, we're at the end of summer, but, you know, it's starting to seem autumnish around here in a lot of ways. They uh, start climbing up trees and start vocalizing from there. And... Uh, that can be kind of confusing if you don't know that spring peepers do that. You would be wondering what bird is making that sound. Or if there's like a tree frog species that does that. Because there is tree frog and wood frog around here with both climb trees. But it is not either, it is a peeper. Someone mowed this. That's interesting. I wonder why. It's more uh, soybean canola crop, I think.
see another airplane taking off from that airfield, private airfield. one, yeah, stag, no, not stag, I it is um, shag bark hickory, this tree, so, notice the bark on the tree, uh, it's kind of shedding off of it, that's a typical thing for shag bark hickory for it to do, this one's a really young tree though, it's not doing it a lot, but it's a type of hickory, and there's some hickory nuts, well, hickory fruit, actually, the nut is going to be inside. Well, that has a distinctive smell, too. It's not the same as a walnut, but it is close. Much sweeter than the walnut. <laughs> the cat bird flew across the trail. That's you know, one of those things you just watch straight ahead. And every once in a while you see a cat bird just fly across. Maybe a cardinal once in a while or a robin, but they're going to be mostly cat birds here. They love the shrubs the most.
Ooh, what's this? It's a flicker. Bright white tail. Some telltale. A white rump, I guess I should say. Another flicker. And that was a young one too, because it had a, a lack of feathers on the face. That would be either a highly molted bird or a juvenile. I'm guessing the time of year. Well, it could be either. Yeah, it's still more likely to be a juvenile, I would think. I don't think the molts always go that way. A little bit of a swampy area here, so I've got more mosquitoes around my face. Something just blew. Another brown or not brown creeper. Brown creeper is a bird. Virginia creeper. It's gone red here. It's climbing up this. Uh, is this an ash? Might be an ash. That thing's not long for this world. Emerald ash borer has shortened the lives of ash trees all around here. They can only get so big and then Emerald Ash Border moves in and kills them. So they're kind of, uh, their future, at least in this region, in the next little while, their future is to live as a shrub, essentially. And just hope that they grow big enough to produce seeds and reproduce before they get killed by the Emerald Ash Border. If that was an ash, that's the first young one I've seen in a long time, though. Usually what you see when you see ones like that is they're growing out of the stump of one that's been killed off. It's not usually a new growth. I'm not entirely sure, though. For me, identifying ash trees has always been about identifying emerald ash borer infections. And I suspect that's true with a lot of people who have learned to identify ash in the last 15 years. Hopefully I'm not moving my hands in front of the camera too much. I just get an influx of mosquitoes briefly there. Oh, they're still coming after me. Seem to be focused on my face, which isn't normal. Usually they go up the arms or back of the neck.
plane taking off. Just behind us here. Just thinking if I can't avoid the airplane noise, I should at least embrace it in some way and <laughs> feature the aircraft if they aren't going to be close. Alright, we have goldfinches again. I'm vocalizing. Oh, an American Robin, too. So if this audio I'm recording with the big mic is any good, we'll use that. But if not, you'll just be hearing the usual sounds, the usual microphone. It's a lot of background highway noise right now. It's the road that we entered in on. It's mildly busy. It's not super busy, but... It's enough. Rarely going to go more than 30, 40 seconds without the vehicle going by. Oh, what do we got here? I saw a bird right here. Hopping around. Unless that was a leaf. It may have been just a leaf fall. That time of year when leaves start falling a bit, and sometimes they look like, oh, there's a bird. You know, it's a it's a leaf. I'm trying to figure out what kind of tree this one is. I guess it's an oak of some kind. It's got acorns. Just the leaves don't look familiar to me, but... Oh, it's got that spiky stuff. I don't know. Oh, well, why not? We'll give iNaturalist a chance to tell us what we're looking at here. Swamp white oak or burr oak or a chickapin, that's possible too. I'm just going to say it's an oak and let someone else identify it for us. So that's the way a naturalist works. You can select the broad range of what you think it is based on what the AI model thinks it is, the machine learning model. It also gives other things that it says, yeah, it could be these, but you're going to have to choose. I don't know them well enough. But iNaturalist lever leverages the power of the internet. Uh, <laughs> but what I mean by that is people on the internet like to say other people are wrong a lot. So um, I guess I, if I really wanted this identified, I should have just chose something at random on that list. And if I was wrong, someone would let me know, because that, that's what will happen with iNaturalist very quickly. But I, I think people will still jump at the chance to identify that oak readily. And I'll find out another time what that is. A lot of honeybees on these uh, golden rods.
even got some flies on here. Some kind of fly species. A lot of honeybees though. Honeybees are not the native bees, of course, but they're really attracted to goldenrod. They really love it. I was hoping we'd see some native bee species, some solitary bees. Oh, that could be one, but it's really tiny. Certainly some hoverflies around. Multiflora rose, which is an invasive rose species that grows around here. You can see those clusters of rose hips. I don't know if these will make good tea or not, I'm not sure. But it's called multiflora rose because what it is is a lot of tiny flowers on a cluster rather than single large rose flowers. It's essentially an escapee from gardens. Is what a lot of invasive flowers in North America are garden escapees. What's that? I'm gonna set down my mic and grab camera because there's something perched on the hydro wire back there. Probably too small to see on the action camera. I think we got a sparrow of some kind, but I'm not sure. I don't know. We have a Eastern Phoebe, I believe. It's perched there, having a rest. Probably looking for whatever insects are flying around up there. Oh, we got another plane taking off. single engine. the end of the road here, the end of the trail. The old rail line, of course, did continue further. It just never made that a public trail. I don't know if it's because it's private land now, or if it's just they didn't feel like continuing the trail, or they reached a certain point, and maybe in the future they're going to extend this trail more. Who knows? Maybe 10 years from now, this trail will keep going. That was the gypsum mine tract trail. I don't know why it doesn't have trail in the end of the name. It's the gypsum mine tract. Which usually when I think tract, I think tract of land. Not a long, thin strip of land that is a trail, but rather a, a chunky piece of land. Oh, gypsum mine tract. So this was September 1st, 2023.